Welcome to the next Feed for Thought. Today we're going to cover the fermentation process. What we're going to talk about is why we do it, what's the goal of it, what are some of the things that happen during that process, and then what can we do in the way of management to make it the best possible that it can be. So why do we do it? We do it to preserve as many of the nutrients that are in the crop standing in the field as possible so that the largest percentage of those nutrients that are in that crop are available for the animals that we feed it to. That's it. We're just trying to preserve it so that it's available over an extended period of time. How's that happen? Basically, it goes through three phases. The first phase, we need it to be really fast. So that's when we initially harvest the crop, get it into a structure, get as much of the oxygen out of it as possible so that it can go into the second phase, which is where primarily it's producing the most of the acids by the bacteria going through the fermentation process, utilizing some of the water soluble carbohydrates in that crop. And part of the byproduct of that is producing acids, typically lactic, acetic, and butyric. What we want is a very high level production of lactic acid, the strongest one. Acetic is okay as long as that's a desired outcome of the inoculant that we may be using on the crop and butyric we want as little or none if possible. So what can we do to help all that? Well, during that first phase, we want to make sure that we harvest that crop at the right moisture and at the right cut length and that we've got enough equipment on that structure, be it a pile, a bunker, whatever it may be, to get as much of that oxygen out as possible. So typically what we suggest is having at least 800 pounds of tractor per ton of silage that's coming into that structure per hour on that pile, constantly packing it in very thin layers, six inches, to get all of that oxygen out as much as possible so that we can have the most efficient fermentation possible. Then we want to make sure we get it covered quickly so that again we keep that oxygen out or prevent any rain from coming down into it that may introduce more oxygen into that mass. The second phase is when most of that acid is produced and that's when we drop that pH hopefully down into that four, four and a half range so that we end up with an extremely stable mass of feed that's going to be well preserved for a long period of time. The third phase is when we open it back up to go ahead and feed it. And again, what are we doing? We're introducing oxygen when we do that. So that's when it's really important that we've packed it well so that the oxygen can't get back into the face of that to start a secondary fermentation that's not gonna be advantageous to the quality of the feed. So when we do open it up, we wanna make sure that we've sized our bunker, our pile, whatever it may be to the right size so that we're removing enough per day so that again we aren't ending up with a spoiled face to where that oxygen is getting in there along with the yeasts and causing degradation of the nutrients that are in that silage. We also want to help that silage by using an inoculant. So we want to inoculate that crop because the naturally occurring bacteria that are sitting on that crop may or may not be a real positive for an efficient fermentation. So that's why we always promote, and others do too, to put a high quality, well-researched inoculant on that crop with the right type of bacteria that are gonna be the fastest, most efficient for dropping that pH down and ending up with a stable mass of feed for a long-term feed out. Those are the basics, that's how we can help it. I hope that's been helpful. Thanks until we talk to you again on the next Feed for Thought.